thank you for being here with us. And next, we'll move on directly to another session. Our first session of today's pavilion would have the title of Accelerating of Mangrove Rehabilitation in Indonesia. So ladies and gentlemen, who is still on the outside of the pavilion Indonesia, we would like to invite you to enter our Indonesia pavilion and please have a seat. We will begin shortly the next session. A very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We will begin our next session. This is our fifth session with the title of Accelerating of Mangrove Rehabilitation in Indonesia. Therefore, I would like to invite the moderator of the session, Ibu Amanda Katili. I to Ibu Amanda, the stage is yours. Good afternoon. My name is Amanda Katili, and I'm the manager of uh, Climate Reality Indonesia. It's part of a global organization that, me, that tries to mainstream the uh, climate crisis and its solutions and action. Uh, this afternoon session is themed Accelerating Mangroves Rehabilitation in Indonesia. And uh, I would like to invite our resource persons to go up on stage. Uh, Dr. Sahat Pangabean, Captain Arif Badrudin, uh, Mr. Rosain Bahrinur, and uh, Dr. Sri Mariati. If you would like, oh, Colonel, I'm sorry, in the uh, same. <laughs> Oh, Captain Navy, okay, okay, yeah. Um, thank you for putting your uniform in because you look very uh, distinguished. Um, we don't have much time, so uh, we would like to go directly to uh, Dr. Sahat, but I would like to inform you that this is a very informative session and we involve multi-stakeholders. We have uh, government officials, we have company representatives, we have NGO, and we have a, a representative from the Navy. Pasahat? Uh, thank you, Bu uh, Amanda. Uh, very good afternoon to all our uh, audience. Uh, in this great opportunity, uh, I would like to share with you about the strategy of uh, acceleration mangrove uh, rehabilitation in Indonesia. Uh, as we know, uh, Indonesia as uh, archipelagic island state uh, has the largest uh, mangrove ecosystem uh, in the world. But uh, due to the lack of uh, uh, poor management or uh, not much more impor uh, information about the, the, the best practice for mangrove management, uh, Our uh, mangroves uh, tend to decrease uh, every year. And for example, if we uh, see in this uh, graphic, in uh, 2000, uh, our uh, mangrove uh, area is, uh, was uh, about 9.37 million hectares, but uh, decrease Continuously until 2015, our mangroves are uh, still only remaining 3.48 million uh, hectares. Uh, in the uh, morning uh, session, uh, we already uh, uh, talking about what is the the, 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 the main uh, problem or what is the the main uh, uh, caused by the 
uh, land conversion, uh, illegal logging, uh, and, and uh, uh, minimum of law enforcement uh, in, in Indonesia. But uh, in 2015, when uh, Joko Widodo was elected as uh, our next president, uh, he uh, pay more attention to the potential of uh, uh, marine and uh, uh, marine uh, natural resources in, in Indonesia, and uh, it can uh, show that the, at the time, at 2015, it is uh, also the establishment of uh, coordinating ministries for uh, maritime affairs, and from that to 2015. Uh, Actually, there are a lot of uh, uh, programs that we, are, we, we have been doing until now, uh, how to uh, 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 rehabilitate a mangrove uh, ecosystem in, in Indonesia. Uh, fortunately, uh, since 2015 until now, uh, we can uh, see in this, uh, in this data, uh, Indonesia mangroves tend to increase uh, until now, the, the data uh, says that 3.56 million mangroves in Indonesia. It means that uh, during the, 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 the five or uh, four, four years uh, later, uh, the, 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 the four uh, uh, years, uh, almost five years, uh, our mangroves uh, now in. Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, if you see this, this data, uh, in 2019, uh, there are the, the decrease of uh, uh, degraded mangrove in Indonesia. Before in 2015, in 1.81, uh, and now uh, decreased to 1.19. Uh, and the good condition in mangrove in Indonesia uh, tend to increase from 1.67 to 2.37. Uh, actually, uh, we uh, have been doing uh, a few programs for that. Uh, for example, uh, program for uh, marine and coastal spatial planning in the, the, the whole of province in Indonesia. It means that uh, we can, uh, uh, we can uh, put the, the, the potential ecosystem in Indonesia, uh, which, which, which uh, location for, for example, for conservation or for, for uh, uh, another uh, economic activities. And also uh, the establishment of marine protected area as an edgy target. Uh, we are trying to achieve uh, about 10% of the uh, marine areas uh, in Indonesia. And also, uh, can you? Uh, now? Doesn't work. Sorry. Uh, and uh, we also uh, uh, has a program uh, green port. Uh, as we know that uh, right now there are two uh, two two million four hundred and fifty nine uh, seaport in Indonesia, and we have a program for rehabilitating uh, mangrove uh, in 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 the area of the seaport, and I think uh, it's uh, one of the success uh, story for uh, our uh, mangrove rehabilitation. And the other hand, the cooperation between uh, among the, uh, uh, the stakeholders in, in, in Indonesia. So uh, it shows that uh, after uh, the establishment of uh, coordinating ministries, uh, we can see the, 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 the trend of the increasing of mangrove uh, uh, condition or, or mangrove areas uh, in Indonesia. Well, uh, now uh, our position now uh, in Indonesia, mangrove in Indonesia, is about 3.56 uh, 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 million hectares in, in Indonesia, and it's uh, equal to three times a Qatar country, or uh, more than uh, 59 uh, times a Madrid city. Uh, so the the the, the uh, look, uh, the, the area of uh, the mangrove in Indonesia, and uh, we try to uh, match the how much the the the, 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 the potential of uh, carbon capture from from the 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 this data. A scientific uh, 
uh, research says that uh, every year uh, at least we can capture um, uh, carbon dioxide from the mangrove about 32 uh, million tons and I think it's uh, uh, very very uh, uh, important uh, for for this ecosystem to contribute to the uh, uh, guest house gases that uh, we have been uh, discussing uh, uh, today well uh, next uh, as uh, we know that uh, our tagline is uh, time for action and today uh, uh, we would like to share uh, with you about the the time for action in Indonesia, uh, especially in mangrove ecosystem. Uh, actually, if, uh, we see that uh, the the the, the uh, activities in, in the mangrove ecosystem, we can see uh, the the the, the ac uh, adaptation uh, strategy and also the uh, mitigation uh, strategy, uh, and also uh, the utilization of the mangrove. That I think uh, in the uh, morning session uh, uh, session we, we already uh, talk about. Uh, ecotourism, uh, education, and, and mangrove product. But uh, I'm trying to, to connect the mangrove uh, activities in Indonesia uh, uh, from uh, adaptation, mitigation, and, and utilization, and we connect it to the SDGs. It shows that uh, at least uh, there are uh, nine uh, uh, goals in the SDGs. Uh, for example, uh, SDGs number one, number uh, about uh, property, uh, number two about hunger, number five uh, about gender, and maybe the, in the next, uh, in the next uh, session, we will uh, uh, talking about uh, gender uh, more, 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 more clearly. And also uh, target number 13, number uh, 14, and number uh, 17. I think uh, this is the, 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 uh, the position of the uh, mangrove activities in Indonesia, and if we uh, connect it to the uh, SDGs uh, 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 achievement. Well, uh, this is our commitment, actually. Uh, as uh, you know that uh, we in uh, uh, coordinating ministries, uh, our focus to coordinate the whole uh, stakeholders in Indonesia, and for uh, mangrove uh, Rehabilitation in, uh, rehabilitation in this case, uh, there are this is the, the all the, this is the whole the stakeholder in Indonesia are to the rehabilitation. For example, from the government, from the central and to local government, uh, and also from the navy here. I think uh, 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 he will uh, give us what what, what uh, uh, navy uh, 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 have been doing in Indonesia, and also state owned enterprises. I think uh, Pak Rosain. Uh, here and and uh, he will uh, give us about what the activities in the in this this institution uh, 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 enterprise uh, uh, and uh, also the, the, the private sector and NGOs. I think NGOs uh, will be represented by uh, Belantara, uh, Bu Sri Muriati, and local community and last but not least uh, uh, university university we, we we need them to to give uh, us uh, 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 the scientific information about uh, what is the best way to to rehabilitate the mangrove or what is the best way to to utilize the the, the mangrove uh, in indonesia uh, luckily uh, this uh, ladies and uh, handsome uh, uh, gentlemen will will will, uh, uh, will give us uh, a more detail about uh, the the activities of mangrove in Indonesia. But before I close uh, my presentation, uh, I will show I will show you that uh, some activities in uh, mangrove in in a short video uh, in this in this slide. Uh, Parasman, Parasman, can you show the video? Indonesia, negeri elok amatku cinta, tanah tumpah darahku yang mulia, yang ku puja sepanjang.
I think that's all. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Saad Pangabian from the uh, Coordinating Ministry of uh, Maritime and Investment Affairs. As uh, he mentioned earlier, that the uh, other resource persons will talk about uh, what they do in their respective organization. Uh, after this, we'll have uh, Colonel Arif speaking about the activities at the Navy. But before that, I would like to invite our other uh, resource person who just arrived, Ibu uh, Fegi Nurhabni. Could you come upstage from, the, uh, from KKP, the Ministry of uh, Marine and Fisheries Affairs? Silakan, Bu. Uh, Colonel? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, you may wonder what the heck is a naval officer standing here talking about um, mangrove protection and rehabilitation. If it is your question, then you are in the right place. <laughs> it is my pleasure indeed to give you a brief of Indonesian Navy contribution for sustainable environment through the protection and preservation of mangrove forests in Indonesia. I am Colonel Arif Badruddin of the Indonesian Navy, currently posted as Senior Officer at the Operational Staff Indonesian Naval Headquarters in Jakarta. For the next 10 minutes, I will brief you how Indonesian Navy contributed to the global efforts in protecting and, protecting and sustaining mangrove forests to prevent severe impact of climate changes. This slide shows you that mangrove protection and preservation is part of national efforts to combat global climate change. In 2012, the President of the Republic of Indonesia promulgated President Regulation No. 73-2012 as a guidance of national strategy for management of mangrove ecosystem. This regulation is intended to synergize all efforts within government bodies in protecting and preserving mangrove ecosystems. Acknowledging the importance of mangrove ecosystem to the global environment, the Indonesian government outlines its strategic plan in managing the protection and rehabilitation of mangrove system, mangrove ecosystem. The strategic, the strategic plan is orchestrated by the coordinating Minister of Maritime Affairs by issuing a roadmap for mangrove rehabilitation acceleration 2019-2023. This roadmap is urgent indeed. There are 3.5 million hectares of mangrove ecosystem in Indonesia. Half of them are in critical condition. Java Island has the largest loss of mangrove ecosystem. To accelerate the effort, the roadmap has put Indonesian Navy as the main driver supported by other entities, agencies, and universities. The roadmap is aimed to preserve and protect mangrove ecosystem, improve public welfare and awareness of natural disaster mitigation. In order to put the roadmap into measurable actions, Indonesian Navy has established a new staff of maritime potential assistant in charge of deliberating the execution of the roadmap. In the naval headquarters, this new staff is led by a rear admiral or major, major general uh, far above me. And at the lowest level is at the naval posts who directly back with the coastal communities in carrying out the pre-planned program. To expand our efforts in protecting and preserving mangrove ecosystem, Indonesian Navy works closely with other stakeholders such as governors, district, NGOs, universities, and local communities. To enable effective cooperation and collaboration, 56 naval bases around the country are instructed to engage with their local governments and communities. Discussions, talks, and dialogues among stakeholders and naval bases are encouraged to find the most effective ways in protecting, rehabilitating, and preserving mangrove ecosystem. Local wisdoms and new technology are wisely combined to achieve highest and best result. The next slide depicts various places where Indonesian naval bases work together with their local partners in protecting and preserving mangrove ecosystem. S starting from the western part, Aceh province reported to have planted 5,000 mangrove trees in February 2019. Other places in Jambi, South Sumatra, and Lampung took their parts in planting thousands of, ma of mangrove trees on their coasts. More than those and thousands of mangrove trees were planted throughout Sumatra coasts. Similar events carried out in other areas in Java, 
Kalimantan, South Istimo, and Papua. To name a few, Tangrang in Banten Province has planted more than 16,000 trees. Sabatik Island, bordering with Malaysia, has 16,000 trees, 16, trees planted. Sorong in West Papua reported to plant 16,000 mangrove trees at, at its beautiful coast. Karangantu in Central Java planted 16,000. Others planted several thousand trees in their coasts. Indonesian naval bases consistently initiate various programs for mangrove protection and rehabilitation throughout the year. Local government and communities, school children, as well as other military branches take part in these efforts. In total, there were 93,000 mangrove trees were planted throughout the year in various coasts in, of Indonesia. I'm coming to my uh, final slide, so please bear with me. Apart from regularly scheduled mangrove rehabilitation program and information events, this year, to commemorate the 74th Indonesian Armed Forces anniversary, Indonesian Navy Chief has ordered simultaneous mangrove plantations through the country. All main naval bases are instructed to create a mangrove re rehabilitation event, taking with them various elements of communities. In Surabaya, our biggest uh, naval fleet, 45,000 mangrove trees were planted, while in Jakarta, the capital city, there were 36,000 planted in several locations. Medan main base in North Sumatra reported to plant 27,000 trees. Tanjung Pinang, bordering with Singapore, planted 24.5 thousand trees. Tarakan main naval base, which bordering with Malaysia, reported to plant 24,000. 38,000 others have been planted throughout Papua. In total, 300,000 mangrove trees have been planted all over Indonesia on that occasion. Of course, this program succeeded in improving people's awareness to protect our coastal environment. Next year, the program has been outlined and will be carried out accordingly to ensure the acceleration of mangrove protection and rehabilitation program in Indonesia work. With this continuous commitment, Indonesian Navy will always play active and important role in contributing to the global efforts in flight fighting climate change. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Arif. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the organizer of the Indonesia Pavilion will upload all the uh, present ma presentation materials on the website. It's indonesiaunfccc.com. Um, next, we'll have uh, Ibu Fegi. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Peggy from the Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries. And thank you for, uh, for having me here, Pasahat and, uh, and and team. Um, okay, uh, my presentation will be about the mangrove rehabilitation, uh, especially for climate change adaptation and mitigation that we already done uh, in Ministry of Marine Affairs and Fisheries. Okay. Um, this cup is a blue cup. We're talking about oceans. We have a lot of side events, uh, dinners, and also bilateral things on oceans. Uh, but yeah, we must uh, consider where we want to go from here. We must set the goals. And I think uh, when we s talk about actions, it's time to act. We must consider three points. Uh, the first one is the economy benefit, uh, the sustainability, and also the inclusiveness. So these three points uh, must be the basis of what uh, actions that we are going to take. So we are not talking about uh, maybe we left some conceptual level and go down to the action level, moving forward to the action level. Okay. This one is the uh, map of Indonesia with uh, some dots with different colors and also a square, uh, which uh, will tell you about three, um, three uh, actions that we already do in uh, uh, mainstreaming uh, the ocean into climate change. 
the first one, the red dot, you can see the, the spread, is the mangrove planting area. So we're conducting some uh, action here, seen uh, from the Aceh here in the north tip of Sumatra until to Sulawesi here. Why not in Papua here in the eastern part? Because the mangrove is still in good condition. Um, the ministry uh, has already uh, conducted a mangrove rehabilitation since 2000. And until 2017, uh, we already uh, planting more th uh, approximately about 15 million uh, stems in which cover 100 and 500 uh, hectares. And in, 2000 and in 2018 to uh, 19, we are already uh, moving to the uh, monitoring phase and we'll see and we will continue more on 2020. That's uh, the red dots. And the next one is the blue dots. That's the area that has uh, what we call the um, mangrove rehabilitation and learning center. So it's the next phase of mangrove rehabilitation. Um, it functions as natural laboratory for not only rehabilitation, but also for education and research. I'll show you the uh, the picture later and also we have the third one the square one it's uh, some area that hardly um, that has a very bad erosion so that the rehabilitation cannot be implemented directly so it needs uh, more structures before we can plan uh, the ecosystem back the mangrove okay uh, here we are using two uh, approach by using hybrid engineering and also with geotextile. This one is what we do, uh, the coastal ecosystem rehabilitation. As you can see, we plant not only mangroves, 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 and the other one is fair. So it depends on the type of the beach. You know, mangroves uh, needs a muddy uh, sediment while in the, uh, with the sandy beaches, uh, you need another coastal vegetation. So it very depends on the uh, type of the beach. This one, the coastal rehabilitation and learning center. Uh, I'll show you some of the example that we already built. This one in West Lombok, uh, Makassar in South Sulawesi, Bitung in uh, North Sulawesi, and also Kuburaya in uh, west of Kalimantan. So uh, after the planting, uh, we want to make it more benefit to the coastal community. The first principle, economic benefit. So we ask the community, we facilitate the community and we develop what we call this, the rehabilitation center. We build some trekking, See, the tracking so that you can have adventure on the mangrove forest. This one in Sinjai, uh, South Sulawesi. So uh, it's already began. It's triggered the economy. And with the average visitors of uh, more than 300 people per day, the income that is gained by the local community can, in, uh, can reach until 1.2 million rupiah per day so it's quite you know we start from the little one and then uh, the money usually goes to uh, another investment you know to build more trekking or maybe uh, other facilities this one in Pangandaran West Java here you can see the type is quite different uh, you need to have boats, uh, not only trekking, but also boats to visit all the mangroves. So you have a, like a canal with all the mangroves around you so that uh, you can enjoy the scenery and also uh, sometimes with the, some points where you can sit and enjoy uh, seafood. 
So uh, the average visitors is also 300 uh, person per day, and income is 6 million rupees per day. So probably that's because of the price of the tickets. So that they can uh, pay for, uh, for the future investment. This one for the third uh, one, the one with the square. For extreme uh, measures, when the abrasion, the erosion is very bad, and you cannot directly uh, planting the mangroves. It needs something in front of it to protect uh, the, the baby mangroves so that it can grow. So uh, this one in the mark in um, central uh, java here um, you can see we using the what we call uh, hybrid engineering is a uh, permeable structures with bamboos so it's uh, very natural so the bamboo is also filled with uh, branches so it will like you know cover the it's uh, similar with the uh, the roots of the mangroves you know the one that grabbing the, 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 the mud. That's what, what, we, what we want to uh, apply. So uh, we built the structure here. Then we hope that in few months or a year that we will have a shallow water uh, behind it. You know, the sediment will come and you can grow mangroves, both naturally or maybe you want to plant in it. So that this one, the area will be moving forward to the previous uh, coastline. And also uh, in the map, uh, we have also the pond conversion into mangrove and leveling and hydraulic arrangement. So there's a lot of uh, ponds that is not longer productive uh, that can be uh, used for mangrove uh, rehabilitation area. And also the other one is about mixed mangrove aquaculture. The pond that connected to the mangrove along the river is also, uh, is also implemented there. So this one uh, in the mark, the, the, the implementation, we have a long collaboration with the Ecoship Consortium for, from the Netherlands for assisting us uh, with the local community and also with the research on the structure. Okay, okay my last slide, Pak. Okay, this one is about young generation. We are moving forward for next generation. So uh, we have what we call Indonesia Coastal Education or in Bahasa Indonesia is Sekolah Pantai Indonesia. Pantai means beach, your coastal. So uh, we ask the student who lives in coastal area and also uh, study there, you know, the school is in coastal area, so that they can be agent of change. We ask them to follow the, the, the material and we let them to act. So observe, we need them to observe, analyze, share and action. Their action is not only about mangroves, they can choose, they depend on their uh, community issue. But I choose uh, some of the actions that related to the mangrove rehabilitations. So you can see this one in, I forgot, oh, this one is in Ramayu, in West Java. This one in Bone, in South Sulawesi. This one is in Pariaman, North, uh, West Sumatra. So we want them to be the agent of change. If they can learn from the young age, we hope that they can share it. They can share it with their family, with their friends, and maybe, you know, with the era like this where, where uh, the social media power is very, very significant impact, have a very significant impact, then we need them to share what they learn and socialize it to uh, a bigger uh, community. Okay, that's all. That's our motto. Exercise. Oh. It's gone. Can we back? No? Okay. Exercise in local, experience in national, and upscaling in global. 
So, terima kasih, gracias, and thank you. Thank you, Ibu. Ladies and gentlemen, as explained earlier, this session is aimed at uh, sharing the collaborations between multi-stakeholders. You heard about the policy earlier, and then the uh, stakeholders also have their activities synchronized with the national policy. And as the uh, Paris Agreement stated, it's important to have the role of non-state actors also involved in climate change activities. Uh, next, we will have uh, Bapak Rosain Bahri Nur from uh, Sukovindo, the uh, state-owned company. Silakan, Pak. A very good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, um, speakers, uh, Saad, Ibu Amanda. It is a great pleasure for me to be here. Um, I'm actually representing my company, which is Sukofindo. Uh, this is a testing, inspection, and certification company. This is uh, a state-owned uh, enterprise, uh, and we are the biggest testing, inspection, certification, uh, and consultation in Indonesia, uh, and the oldest as well. Um, I guess before I started uh, the conversation about mangrove, I think let me clarify in terms of where we're sitting as uh, a state-owned enterprise, a Sukofindo, in this journey of mangrove. Um, there are two things that we are doing at this point in time. Uh, number one is we are actually a state-owned enterprise, meaning that we are an enterprise. But in terms of the way we do things, the way we do business, it's somewhat different to uh, maybe other state-owned enterprises because the objective of state owned enterprise in Indonesia is it is created not only to create profit, but it is actually an agent of development. Uh, and also we are asked to actually empower the economy uh, of, the, of the poor as well. And this also includes uh, mangrove, where most uh, people who live in the mangrove area, uh, usually someone that needs to be, uh, uh, I guess, supported in terms of the economy. And number two is actually the CSR as well, the Corporate so uh, Social Responsibility. Uh, I think earlier uh, have my colleagues here from uh, uh, Pupukaltim, which is also a state-owned enterprise, earlier mentioned about the three Ps, which is the uh, people, planet, uh, and profit. So these are the things that we're also doing. Uh, and in state-owned enterprise, there are 159, if I'm not mistaken, uh, state-owned enterprises that are in Indonesia operating um, and you name it from A to Z, all the industry, I think all of it is actually being controlled by state-owned enterprise mostly. And therefore, the impact of state-owned enterprise in the journey of mangrove, it is quite uh, significant. And therefore, uh, we are playing uh, a significant role as well in ensuring that the conservation program is working and hand-in-hand -hand with all the stakeholders. Next. Well, I do have the... Okay. In terms of the mangrove issues, um, we do identify that there are about 120 million people living near mangrove. And 120 million for us as an enterprise, these are uh, people who are potentially our customers. And for a company like us, which is doing testing, these are the customers that we need to make sure that they're part of the business ecosystem, and therefore we need to ensure that we do take care of it from a sustainability perspective. We do look into the tourism uh, part, fisheries, and also the coastal protection, and also in terms of uh, the uh, mangrove ecosystem services, and also the climate regulation. Now, Sukofindo in this is actually playing uh, uh, a role in ensuring that the threats that we are actually feeling at this point in time, uh, particularly on the climate change and also on the coastal development, can be managed accordingly. Uh, Sukofindo as a testing inspection certification, uh, also working with the fisheries ministry. Uh, we're working with uh, Kyle Haka, which is the environmental ministries, who then uh, progress further, not only about mangrove, but also about environmental issues. Um, I will then ex share with you a bit in terms of where are we in this journey. If you look at this integrated mangrove policy, and this is actually coordinated by the Ministry of um, uh, Coordinating Ministry of Maritime, uh, Sukofindo is actually somewhere here. 
given that we are actually testing inspection certification as mentioned, we do have access to 56 uh, a laboratorium and also a point of service across Indonesia, meaning that our position is quite extensive in terms of providing the support that is needed, particularly for laboratorium uh, lab, labs testing of the environment. Now, what we are trying to do today together with the State and Enterprise, Ministry of State and Enterprise, is to actually to push forward a, uh, a state owned enterprise. So the BUMN is Baran Usam Milik Negara, which is a state owned enterprise integrated mangrove pro program. And this program is actually done together with the ministry, uh, coordinating ministry of uh, maritime, where we are, would like to actually use uh, the CSR uh, funding from the, all the 159 state owned enterprises to be able to then support the mangrove uh, initiatives. Now, that is part of the CSI that I mentioned to you about. But the other thing that we are also doing is about Greenport. So if you were here about two hours ago, um, there was uh, a presentation made by uh, my colleagues from uh, Pupu Kaltim explaining about uh, their initiatives with regard to the environment and also Greenport. So the Greenport uh, is actually a standard that is now being enforced, uh, and we are in the process of enforcing it together with the state owned, uh, sorry, together with the Minister of Coordinating Minister of Maritime, where we are actually uh, trying our best uh, to, uh, I guess, align uh, the international standard and also the local standard or the local regulation uh, on uh, green port or port. There are 15 aspects uh, and 15 criteria that we are actually pushing. And one of it is actually, you can see number 12 there, is actually the management of natural habitats and conservation. Now these are the things that we're actually doing in terms of ensuring that the mangrove rehabilitation program is part and parcel of the program that, uh, that uh, every company is doing, uh, particularly on the side of uh, environmental sustainability program of that corporate uh, social responsibility program. And therefore, these are the things that, that, that we actually uh, push ahead to ensure that we're able uh, to then sustain uh, the operation of the state owned enterprises, but not only state owned enterprises, but also enterprises who are located or doing business in the shore of Indonesia. I would like to mention as well that Pupuk Kaltim, uh, which is PKT, is one of the early adopters of uh, Greenport. And Greenport is actually one of the uh, things that we are pushing hard, hard because these are actually not only about the three Ps, but it's also about doing business internationally as well. And the green port is one thing that we believe will be able to, uh, to uh, change uh, the game of mangrove because this is actually part of how we're going to push ahead the mangrove rehabilitation through green port. I think that will be my uh, last slide. Uh, thank you again uh, for the opportunity. Uh, be happy to have any questions later on. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Pa. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, actions on the ground are not easy. Lots of things to do, coordinations, policies, programs, projects, but it can be done. And uh, we'll hear from Belantara Foundation. Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I'm glad to be here to share about uh, my presentation about the Mangrove restoration through community empowerment in Sumatra, Indonesia. Uh, Blantara Foundation is a non-profit organization in Indonesia. We work to support government uh, to achieve SDGs and also how to reduce uh, carbon uh, uh, emission. And we work to support uh, internal landscape uh, across five provinces in Indonesia. Uh, we established by private sector uh, for additional uh, Financial resources are being raised from the public and international organization, and also the other donors. Uh, we support SDGs 14 of 17 uh, SDGs. And then, uh, this is uh, mangrove distribution in uh, the world. 
19% uh, mangrove uh, uh, dot in Indonesia, and then this uh, our background and challenge, and why we support and uh, program uh, mangrove restoration, and then uh, this uh, talking about um, more than 40, 50% uh, mangrove rest in Indonesia categories uh, as critical condition, and then the others uh, forest as carbon storage, and then that's why we also. Um, support this program and then uh, yeah this uh, as you know this is uh, very important uh, mangrove is very important for the earth and then also for the communities and then crucial to mitigation and adaptation if we see Indonesian uh, target uh, in the government uh, will restore all the mangrove ecosystem is in 2045 that's uh, 3.49 million hectares. This is uh, from the Religion Coordinating Minister for Economic Affairs, number four years, 2017. And this is our project objective, why we support, because uh, to mitigate uh, mitigation to climate change through restoration on degraded land, and then adaptation to climate change uh, through community empowerment around forest and coastal area, and then to support Indonesian government, NDC, uh, to reduce GHG emission uh, by 29% and 41% with international support in 2030. This is uh, our area been done in, uh, especially in East Sumatra cluster. In total, we work in eight villages. We actually working with uh, directly with uh, communities uh, in the village. And then this is our strategy. We change the strategy uh, for uh, restoration and protection activity uh, are carried out through community development. This is uh, how to ensure, like uh, before the presenter talking about the have economic and also have sustainability and inclusive. This step, how to um, collaborate with communities in a local village. We need consensus. Uh, between stakeholders. It means we work directly with head of villages. So uh, after that, we're making agreement. And then we enter not uh, directly to protection and restoration in their area, but we come uh, enter from the community uh, livelihood. This is uh, our area, uh, not much at all, but already uh, we um, start in this area in Rio province and then we also share to the community how to rehabilitate method uh, from the nursery and then tree printing monitoring uh, tree treatment and uh, monitoring uh, what we get from all our activity in the fields so the local community are open for collaboration and partnership with others especially with uh, companies and uh, other organization. And then, yeah, we still have a uh, problem, uh, especially in the uh, high tides, that uh, we get 30% uh, uh, mortality due. And then uh, this program to ensure the sustainability, we uh, enhance livelihood. And then after that, the community also uh, have responsible to restore their area and protect their area because their area is natural uh, capital or the capital for the ecotourism or tourism in their area. And then what next? We will continue to support uh, rehabilitation by 200% uh, 200 hectares in eight villages in 2024. And then we will focus uh, on strengthening community development through ecotourism, water and sanitation, and in hand community livelihood because the, uh, the main problem in the coastal area in Indonesia, especially in the villages, uh, lack the sanitation and lack uh, clean water. And then we are open for collaboration and will engage alternative finance to accelerate this in initiative, uh, such as uh, this is a revolving fund, crowdfunding, running for mangrove or other international donors. This is uh, the area where uh, we already work and then continue in 2020 and until 2024. 
and you can see the area is very degraded mangrove and then already uh, get a fire uh, in 2015 and then also have uh, like um, the the mangrove has been uh, reduced crab and fish uh, get around mangrove ecosystem that's all my presentation thank you gracias Uh, thank you, Dr. Sri Mariati. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been hearing about mangroves for one hour. If you have time this evening, please stop by for dinner here at the Indonesia Pavilion. It's free and you can taste uh, mangrove chips or crisp, as they say in the UK. And uh, I'm happy to inform you that the uh, Minister of Environment and Forestry highly appreciates this session, the audience, the resource persons, and uh, we'll have Dr. Agus Justianto, the uh, chair of the Indonesia Pavilion, to convey the appreciation from the minister. A very good afternoon. Thank you, Bu Amanda Katili. Distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin my brief closing session remarks by delivering messages from her Excellency Ibu Siti Nurbaya, the Minister of Environment and Forestry, expressing her appreciation to the coordinating Ministry of Maritime and Investment for arranging this important multi-stakeholder panel discussion session on accelerating the mangrove rehabilitation in Indonesia. Distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen, Indonesia is blessed with the most extensive mangrove which cover more than 20% of the total mangrove area in the world and also has the largest biodiversity with the most varied structure. This extraordinary natural heritage provides a high responsibility for Indonesia to preserve it. The Ministry of Environment and Forestry of the Republic of Indonesia addresses his uh, high concern and consideration on the sustainability of mangrove ecosystem for its diverse functions and benefits such as coastline protector from abrasion and tsunamis, seawater in intrusion barrier, spawning area for various marine biota, sources for community income such as ecotourism, timber and non-timber utilization, and high carbon storage. Mangrove is an example of a blue carbon ecosystem with an ability to store carbon at densities three to five times higher than tropical forests. All of these important environmental services have made mangrove ecosystem becomes a very important ecosystem that needs to be sustainably managed and maintained. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, mangrove deforestation has been an increasing threat in the world for the last decades, especially in the developing countries, including Indonesia. The main causes of mangrove deforestation, degradation, and destruction are illegal logging, land conversion to other uses, encroachment, pollution, pond expansion, and unsustainable cultivation practices. When mangroves are converted into other land uses, they will release a significant amount of greenhouse gases that can contribute to global warming. I agree with that already mentioned by Pak Sahat Pangabean, that we have a big challenges to restore the mangrove ecosystem and we would need more significant efforts on this. However, I am very happy to hear that there is a slight increase of mangrove ecosystem from 3.48 million hectares in 2015 to 3.56 million hectares in 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, at the international level, Indonesia has initiated five of, out of the 23 resolutions adopted during the fourth session of the United Nations Environment Assembly, or UNEA 4, that was held in Kenya this year. Three resolutions initiated by Indonesia highlighted the role and importance of mangrove and coastal ecosystems. One of them is Resolution 4, 12, on sustainable management for global health of mangroves. The resolution on mangrove global health was one of the efforts to curb the rate of mangrove degradation by promoting restoration through sustainable management. 
As a further step of Indonesia's concern to the global health of mangrove, Indonesia is preparing the establishment of the World Mangrove Center, which functions as a hub where all things related to mangrove in all over the world can be obtained, including the result of research and good mangrove management practices that are now scattered. I believe after the, this important discussion session at Indonesian Pavilion, the Ministry of Environment and Forestry will work closer with stakeholders, particularly the Coordinating Ministry of Maritime and Investment, Indonesian Navy, and for sure, not only limited with our partners in Indonesia. Distinguished speakers, guests, ladies and gentlemen, to conclude my closing re session remark, eventually, I would like to thank all of you for your participation in this session and visiting the Indonesian Pavilion. May we all have a fruitful discussion today to seek for better management for our mangrove forest. And lastly, please enjoy the Indonesian hospitality by testing our traditional refreshment after this session. I thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Pak Agus. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Dr. Agus Justianto is also the Director General of Forestry and Environmental Research Development and Innovation Agency at the Ministry of Environment and Forestry. Thank you again. Uh, before I uh, return this to the organizer, I again would like to uh, inform you about dinner, but not only dinner. There will be Indonesian traditional dances where you all can participate. It will be fun. Thank you, Ibu Amanda, as the moderator. 6 p.m., right after the uh, Ocean Day session. Okay, thank you, Ibu Amanda, and all the speakers. And after this, there will be a token of appreciation that will be given by Bapak Agus Justianto as the chairman of Indonesia Pavilion. Therefore, I would like to ask all the speakers to join on the center of the stage. And afterwards, we would like to invite all speakers, Bapak Agus and Ibu Amanda, to join the photo session. Okay, please give a round of applause to all of the speakers, the keynote speaker and the moderator for today's session.